Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm talking about the Isafarian Guard reprint campaign. Note, I say talking about and not review because this is not a review. This is almost a cross between a should you back it video and a, a preview video. This is not paid content, by the way, although it is worth noting that disclaimer, I do work for GameFound and Isafarian Guard is being launched on GameFound. Please take that into account. This is basically... This is an interesting video. You see, I'm here to talk about what the Ice Fair and Guard reprint is, what it's bringing to the table, and unfortunately I can't talk about it from the sense of hands-on experience because I don't have anything in front of me to actually work with. There are not prototypes out there in existence to work with, so I can just tell you what's going on about the game. And I'm doing that because I like the Ice Fair and Guard a lot. I've enjoyed this game a lot, and I want to talk about what's coming up, partially because it addresses some of my own concerns with where the game is, a game that I very much enjoy, but have one notable critique, a critique that has been shared. I find I find players who play the Ice Fair and Guard are divided up into two camps, those that really love the game, and those that love the game, but do have concerns about the amount of grind that can be present, depending on your experience and they are doing things to address that they are doing things in this new campaign this is both a reprint but also updated content as well and so i wanted to go through a short notes on what the ice fair and guard is as well as what you can expect from the new campaign as far as the short notes before i go into the ice fair and guard in general it's worth noting i have an unboxing i have a gameplay i have a first impressions i can't possibly call it a review this game has like 300 hours of content and i'm nowhere near there so i have a first impressions unboxing a gameplay i also have a full comparison video comparing five different big box campaign experiences and ranking each of them the pros and the cons which one might be for you in different ways and one of the perks one of the pros of the ice fair and guard is it has one of the most if not the most immersive narrative experience I've ever experienced in a board game. The Foreteller app, the Foreteller narration, the way they have that, the storytelling in general. It is, I, I can't promise it's the best story you've ever read, I just can't say that, but I can tell you it's one of the most immer immersive stories I've experienced within the board game world. That is one of the highs of the Isafair and Guard and why I enjoy it. Combine that with bag building. This game has a degree of progression. You're going to be engaging in the game. In this game, you're going to be wandering around on this larger map over here, going around the Kingdom of Isafar, if I recall correctly. And you're going to be wandering around, but you're also going to have characters. So over here, we have Alec over here. But in each of the five campaigns, you're going to have two characters that you're using in the game. And those characters are going to have their own unique aspect. This is not a small, nuanced difference between our warrior and a barbarian. We are talking fully-fledged different characters that will all have their own twists and ways that they, they build out their bag and their own advantages, the uh, the items they have, the gears they have, everything they have is going to really direct how you experience and enjoy that character vastly different than other characters in the game. They just, they play, the play styles are so drastically different and therefore also so rewarding to build them out. And that's what you're doing in the game. You're going to frequently be facing off encounters. Uh, you're going to have enemies on these enemy boards. There are four of these. You're going to be facing off against multiple enemies at once and then you're going to be building out your bag adding chips to it over time, uh, deluxifying, not deluxifying, enhancing who you are as a character, what you do and what your chips do as you upgrade yourself. And then you start having cars, various cars that will be in play on your board, cars that are going to flip in different ways and activate in different ways. And it's all about trying to find the ways that your character operates so that they can take down the enemies as efficiently as possible while you preserve your life force as much as possible so that you ideally don't die. It is a long game. There are multiple campaigns. There's five campaigns in the core box, and each one is a lot of content behind them. You're talking about, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 hours for a campaign, depending on how involved you are in side quests, and that just gives you a lot of a lot. I mean, you can charge through it. You can charge through them. I believe if you're trying to be really aggressive, you can charge through a campaign in 20 to 30 hours. But for most players, that likely won't happen. For most players, you're looking at closer to the 30 to 50 per campaign, which gives you just a ton of content in this game. That's kind of the high notes of this Vanguard. I'm not going into a full review or full how to play. Again, I've talked about that more in other videos, and that's not the goal here. The goal here is to talk about what's going on with the GameFound campaign. What are you, what, are you, what can you expect to see, both as a new party to the game, as well as someone's coming to it for the first time. As someone's coming into it for the first time, uh, you're looking at four different pledge levels that are available. There's going to be the to the $180 pledge level for the full game. That's just going to give you the full game of the Ice Fair and Guard. Please note, this is much more expensive than I believe the original was a $69 or $79 price tag that the original game had. It is it is much more expensive because the original game was frankly underpriced for the sheer amount. I mean, do you see the size of this box? This is a Frosthaven size box, and by Frosthaven size box, I mean it makes it makes Frosthaven look like a smaller box. This is a large, heavy box full of just multiple just giant i mean these, these are full two full trays full of chips boxes full of cards an absolute ton of content the weight of this thing pulling it off the shelf every time i pull this off the shelf 
you, you want to take yourself very seriously when you do so. This is a heavy box with a lot of content, and so it's $108 for the full game. It's $200 for the game plus Fortale. That's going to be $20 for the Fortale narration, which uh, they're adding. One of the things we're going to talk about soon is that they're adding more narration to the various side quests to more of the game, so that more of your experience is fully fleshed out on Forteller. So $180 for the game, $200 for including Forteller, $240 if you're including the Neofreen map, and $275 if you're doing the all-in for, for $1,700 plus sleeves from Sleeve Kings uh, being added to your game. That's basically what you're looking at as far as the possible pledge levels. Anywhere from $180 to $275 for the new game as is. But that doesn't talk about what's being changed for those of you who have already backed the game. For those of you who have already backed it, whether you've played it or not, to understand what is out there and what you're getting your hands on, the biggest thing to note is that there's a $39 update pack out there. There's an update pack that's going to update your game to the new version for $39. And I know how frustrating it is. It is frustrating to have update packs in any game, and it's frustrating to feel punished for being an early adopter. The counter to that is I'll point out the difference between the $79 original price point and the $180 now. Even with the update pack, you're paying less than someone who, who's new to the game is paying for this. But the update pack is meant to be there for a variety of reasons. They're doing a lot of things, but the first thing to note is every single one of these books is being fully reprinted. These books over here, there's five different campaign books, all of them with a ton of content in them. Every single one of these is being reprinted. The, the pages so often, the books so often reference various sections. You can't just put out a small little update, this, that, or the other. You have to fully, it's a, it's a fully encompassing system. So you have to kind of update all of them and all of the books are being updated, but that also allows room for more content or tweaks or adjustment to the content being done. So every single one of these books is being changed. If you're someone who is not interested in the update pack, if someone who's just interested, you have a Sphere and Guard, you love it, you're not going to play through it again anyway, you're just kind of fine with the experience where it is, and you're not interested in waiting to see what shows up. Well, your game is already the game it is. Your game is as good as you are currently enjoying it, which means if you love your game, you already love it. And if you hate your game, well, then you already sadly hate it. But the update pack is going to be giving you all these books are going to be completely brand new printed, as well as giving you hundreds of new cards. So you don't have to mix and match and trying to find exactly which card. You're looking at 300 to 400 new cards in the, in the update pack or in the new printing. Those are going to give you either new content or updated content without having to mix and match, you know, trying to find, okay, I have to take out this card and put in that one and take out this card and put in that one. We're not doing any of that. Or say we're not doing, they're not doing any of that. But that's going to be the other thing that's there in the update pack. The event cards, one of the things, that, one of the changes you can expect to see from your final copy of the game to the new copy is it's gone from 60 event cards to nearly tripling that to 160 event cards instead. Those event cards are one of the things that do try to, in some way, mitigate the grind, giving you something else that's happening as you go from, from region to region. So going from 60 event cards to 160 cards, you're also going to be adding, they're going to be adding a region, a new region that didn't exist in the original game is going to be added to the game as well. So again... You have more and more things being slowly added to the Ice Faring Guard to enhance it. It effectively is a 1.5 version of the game. It's not new, a new expansion. It's not new, you know, new content in the typical sense, but it's updated and improved upon content across the board. They're adding four, five to six hours of foretell narration. There's going to be more side quests, caravan quests, all of that. So your foretell experience is going to be even more all-encompassing than it was before. Bringing in those same voice actors to redo, to to add in, not redo, to add in new content to the experience. So if you like the foretell experience and you wanted to have it present everywhere, well, it's going to be more present than it was before with these extra five to six hours of narration. The branching paths in the game is one of those things that... I want to be a little looser, I don't want to get too into it because I, I want to save your experience for you, but one of the things they're doing in order to kind of deal with some degree of the grind, and they, they're doing a bunch of things to try to mitigate, to try to improve the experience so that you have all the highs with as little of that grindy experience, which for some has been a problem, for some it hasn't, so, so it'd be, if you're someone who didn't you know, have a problem with it already, you're totally fine. If you're someone like myself who loved the game but felt there was a little bit too much rep repetition, this can be one of those things that engages with that. But they're going to have branching quests with more consequences to them. Meaning the original Ice Faring Guard, or version 1.0, already, already has a degree of choice in the game. But those choices ricochet back on each other, and you're not going to have a large degree of consequences on the choices you make. It's more about just which element you're kind of experiencing. But now you're going to have more consequence, more weight to the choices you make. Things you do in the game are going to have an outcome, for better or for worse, how you engage with the world. And you might find yourself getting more or less rewards for doing different things. Rewards that minimize the amount of grind in the game by kind of giving you some of those resources based on the pathways you've chosen, the options you've taken, and therefore lo lower the amount of, you know, trying to find whatever other stuff you need from, from uh, the... Uh the sill to the resources to all of that the other things you need in the game you're going to get less of that that you're trying to hunt down because you're going to be getting more rewards based on the types of options you take as you go through these branching paths so there's more of a not necessarily more of a long-term way to the way things play out but more of a weight and consequence to the things that are happening in the game that's going to give you all of that 
Now, it's worth noting as well that this game, because I mentioned, uh, you know, waiting for the final game. If you are back in this, if you're hoping for the update pack, when will you be able to play the game? The current plan for the Ice Vanguard, their current plan is to have the Pledge Manager close by the end of the year. It's also worth noting, by the way, that the, the prices in the Pledge Manager are going to be higher than the prices doing the campaign. So if you're someone who's waiting to back in the Pledge Manager, prices are going to be a little higher. They're going to go to full MSRP, I believe. And so just, you know, back accordingly, back responsibly. There's also, of course, the stretch pay. It's over on GameFound. So if you want to split up your payment, you have that option. But if you wait until the Pledge Manager, you will be paying a little bit more for the game. But their goal is to close the Pledge Manager by the end of the year. Their goal is to close the Pledge Manager so that they can get everything shipped off as soon as possible. I cannot guarantee at all what their turnaround times will be. No one can, not themselves, not anyone, not the factories. No one can guarantee turnaround times. But their goal is to have this very quickly turned around. Their goal is to get this new version, this new green printed version of the game, into your hands as fast as possible. They want you to be able to play this game in the whatever tweaked version uh, as soon as you possibly can. And so that update pack, if you're sitting there wondering, well, I have a Svengar, but I don't want to wait another year and a half to get my hands on the new copy. Hopefully, if things go well, that won't be the case. That's what's going on here. Again, this is not a review. I have not played the new content. I cannot tell you if the new content improves the experience. All I can tell you is that the Ice Vanguard is a great game that I am optimistic and hopeful about the changes that they are making because any change in the right direction could hopefully just make the experience even better on top of an already great game that I've thoroughly enjoyed. As far as what comes next to the campaign, there's not going to be stretch goals. There's going to be daily reveals. You can check all of that out and see it across, you know, follow the campaign. I'll link to it down below, as well as all those other videos I mentioned. I'll link to all of that down below so you can be informed as possible. And there's a variety of other channels that have done gameplay content, review content, all different kinds of content around this game. It is, it's an excellent experience. It's rated a 9.0 on Board Game Geek right now as of the time of this video, and I understand why. If you've played the Ice of Aaron Guard, it gives you a lot of incredible moments and a lot of fun bag building, enemies to fight against, and the only downside, the only downside is the one thing that I do mention and they are trying to address as much as possible, which is the potential for the elements of the game to feel a bit repetitive the more you're playing into them. And they are trying to approach that as much as possible, to tweak it as much as possible, to maintain the feel of all the good that you like about the game, while minimizing just how much of that there can be. In any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you found this video helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.